And I don't know if you can see, but we've been going through this series of the fruit. You guys can come to the front, by the way. I feel like some of you guys are too far. Come to the front. Don't be shy. Here you go, Pete, in the back. We're, as you guys know, we've been going through a series of the fruit of the Spirit. Who knows what is the uh, fourth manifestation that we're going to be looking at today? Patience, right? And the thing about patience is that patience is... It's not like the most, how could you say, it's not like the most popular or the most wanted kind of manifestation of the fruit. Like everybody wants to have joy, right? Like, yes, give me some joy in my life. Give me some love. Give me some peace. I need some peace. But patience, we almost... Uh, kind of like stray away from it. Yeah, like we asked uh, Helen... Um, we told Helen that we were giving the, we're just going to put her on blast. We told Helen we were giving the word about patience. She's like, no, 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 no. I know not to ask for patience. Okay. You're not going to get me. Uh, she said that she asked for, for wisdom and, and for strength. But we're going to break it down. And it's such a powerful manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. Go ahead, love. Um, well, let's sit down first. Yeah, let's right? sit down. Let's sit down. Um, and let's, uh, we want to kind of start with a prayer. Um, you want to pray, love? Yeah, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is truth. We thank you, Lord, that your word has the power to change us from the inside, Lord, to transform our lives. Help us receive your word, God. We just remove any distractions tonight. Help us receive Everything that you have for us, God, so we can live this out, so we can be more Christ-like, so we can fulfill your purpose, the purpose that you have for us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So if we can go to Galatians 5, 22 to 23, and I'll read it off. I think it's on the, on the um, screens. So it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. And I kind of wanted to pick two people um, in the crowd and just kind of before you, before you uh, raise your hand. And I want you to answer this question. What area in your life do you want to grow in patience? It can be relationships, finances, um, your marriage. Does anyone want to share, and then I'll bring the mic to you, or else I'll go to you. Marilyn, come on. <laughs> woo, woo. Uh, parenting. Parenting. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to come over here. <laughs> Same thing, parenting. Parenting? Oh, okay. Sammy? Um, I guess, like, siblings, to be patient with my siblings. Ooh, and they're sitting right next to each other. Oops. <laughs> but, you know, uh, um, a lot of us, you know, we want to grow in patience, right? And it's funny because Marcos kind of explained a little bit about patience where a lot of us, you know, think that we're not patient, right? Maybe it's because your temperament, right, or your personality, or maybe the environment that you grew up in. But, but if God says that, that you have a spirit, right? And that you can actually manifest patience. Well, it, it lets us know that we can be patient, right? Amen. And really, who wants to receive more patience? Raise your hand. Who, who like, says, man, I know I can grow in patience. Raise your hand. Keep your, keep your hand raised. I'm going to pray this prayer so that you receive more patience. You guys ready? Wouldn't it be great if that's how it actually worked? <laughs> right? <laughs> Pray for me so I can receive more patience. Just somebody, just, just lay their hands on me so I can be more Christ-like. But the Bible talks that we have to walk this out. We have to live this out in our day-to-day -day lives and surrender, right? The Bible talks about, when the Bible talks about patience, it doesn't just talk about waiting, if you look at uh, King James and you look at uh, Galatians 5, verse 22, it says, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, right? In another version, it will say endurance, right? So that fruit has so much depth to it. 
But we have to live it out. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the seed, as Pastor Ernie was saying. We have his spirit, but we have to exercise patience. And we have to exercise long-suffering and endurance. And there's three ways to display patience. Long-suffering, which you guys heard, the ability to suffer long, right? And then you have endurance, which means not giving way. And the last one is patience in waiting. And it's not just the kind of, sorry, it's not the kind of waiting that says, hey, your Amazon package is late, just wait another couple days, right? It's like when you're waiting on a promise from God. It's like when you're waiting, when you've been praying, when you've been interceding, when you've been believing God for something, and he's calling you to wait. That's the kind of waiting that, he's, that, the, that the word is talking about. And why is patience so important to develop and to grow? Because as it says in New King James Version, long suffering, we will all go through suffering. You can't avoid it. And today you're sitting here tonight, you're either going through suffering, you came out of suffering, or you will go through suffering. We will all Christians, non-Christians will go through suffering, right? We can't avoid it. Sometimes we think, well, I came to Christ and I don't have to struggle anymore. I don't have to deal with, with, with the problems of life. But Jesus says, in this life, you will go through trials and tribulations. But take heart because I have overcome the world. So we're going to go through suffering, right? We might as well learn how to suffer like, like Marcos was saying in a Christ-like way. Amen. So how do you grow in patience if not through suffering? And I know that maybe you came here today and you, you, know, you wanted to hear an encouraging word, but this is encouraging. And I want you to know that if you're here, it's because I believe that God placed you here so that you can hear you are patient, that you can grow in the, this manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so I, I wrote here a point, point number one, patience in the form of endurance, right? Patience in the form of endurance. Um, James 1, 2 to 4 says, James 1, 2 to 4, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And what does it mean to endure? It means to go through an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. I, some of you guys are looking at me like, I, I can see it from This is here. not the kind of message I wanted to. <laughs> if we can have uh, Claudio come to the front, we're going to uh, show what this verse is talking about. Come on, Claudio. We've been using him this whole series uh, of the fruit of the Spirit. He's this serious model. Give it up for, give it up for Claudio, please. So this verse that Emily just read, it says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, right? So how many of you guys want to grow in endurance? Okay, so this is what it looks like. Come on, Claudio. What does the definition say, babe, of endurance? It's going through an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. Okay, so you're just going to hold there and you're not going to give way, okay. right? So this is life happening, right? You, you can't give way, okay? You big, strong guy, right? This is, this is how you build. Life is testing your faith. Show me the goodness of God. See if your God is still good, right? Is he still good or are you giving way? Kind of. Right? This is why patience is so important because we go through the, the, the struggles, we go through difficult situations, and we just get ran over by life. And the world is looking at you, wait, I thought your God was good. I thought your God was faithful. What happened? You lacked endurance, right? Keep on, keep on. You lost your job. What happened? Oh, you got you to gotta hold on. Where's your endurance? Oh, man, I just got rejected. Oh, what's going on? Oh, my family, God forgave me, but, but my family hasn't forgiven me. What's going on? Right? There's an endurance, a callous that you have to go through in order to grow in patience, guys. This is why patience is so important. 
Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Man. Come on. But what happens is that we run away from the testing of our faith. We run away when we go through something. We either go, and, and, and I say we because I've done that. Why is this happening, God? And, and the crazy thing about this verse is that it says, consider it all joy. What? Consider it all joy when you face trials and tribulations. Because what happens when you endure is, what happens when your faith is tested is more endurance and character and hope. You guys receiving? You know, I want to ask you guys, uh, when was the last time that your faith was tested, right? When was the last time that you had to endure through a difficult situation? And, you know, we were talking about it with Manny back in September 2017. You know, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, as some of you guys know. Um, she, you know, we get the phone call. She's diagnosed with cancer. Um, she's also pregnant with my sister. And in that journey, you know, uh, she, she got a mastectomy done. And in 2018, she goes on remission. And, you know, she gets cancer back all over her body. And, you know, it got worse. And I remember through that situation, you know, really remembering this verse, right? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind. And I'm thinking, like, this is difficult. Like, this is actually testing my faith. In that moment, I remember, like, we would pray for my mom to get healed. We would, we were, right, we were declaring the blood of Jesus over her life. We were declaring from the, from the moment that she started, the, you know, when we, uh, sorry, the moment that they called that she had cancer, we weren't oblivious to the fact that she had cancer, but it was either that or you, or you had faith. And seeing her go through the process of being this independent woman who was able to walk to using a walker to, you know, um, having to use oxygen and little by little um, not being able to walk. You know, her hair started falling off and sitting with my mom in the car, driving from the car to the hospital. You know, we were in the hospital for like four or five days a week because she felt weak, because, you know, something was going on in her body, her lungs, you know, eventually started to fail. And so with all this, I remember just thinking, God, give me strength. Because in this time, I don't have any. I remember like driving my mom to the hospital, coming back and just crying. And I remember thinking like, God, you, you have a plan for this. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't, like, I trust you, God, but this is difficult. And I think even like sitting, I remember sitting down with my mom and telling her, mom, like, God's going to heal you. Like, I, I'm seeing the circumstance and, you know, the doctors are coming in telling me that it's worse. The doctors are coming in telling us that it's going everywhere. But we're like, no, but the blood of Jesus has power, right? And so every time that we, we you know, went back home, it was, it was like only God could have strengthened me during those times. And today I'm sitting here sharing my testimony because I believe that it was a test of my faith. And, if I, and I believe that if I wouldn't have endured, I probably wouldn't be here sharing to you guys the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, like how God took care of us, how God was present, right? But in those times, like when you think about endurance, it means that there's going to be a tough situation, right? And you can't run away from that. You can't run away from tough situations. Let, let me, because uh, I, we were dating in that moment, and you're paraphrasing a lot, but it was one of the most difficult situations that anybody could live through. Uh, her mom ended up passing away, and I remember us having to see her at the hospital, and we would just have to pray before going there because we knew what was going on. We knew the environment, the environment that we were going to, uh, to go see. And it was such a difficult moment. But at any moment, I didn't see you question God. I didn't see you uh, say, you know what, I'm not going to follow God anymore. If anything, it was something that you pressed in even more. And even through tears, through crying, through just, just seeing your mom's body deteriorate, 
through that pain, you still didn't let go of believing, one, that she could be healed, two, just believing that God had something planned, right? And I, I think, like, you know, when you're going through situations like that in life, right, and you, you see the circumstances, it's not getting better, right? You're, you're praying for something specifically for your life, for your family. And, you know, you, you, you actually see it and you're like, man, there's no change. Nothing's happening. And I remember, you know, like Maddie was sharing, like, it, it was hard. It was difficult. I remember, like, coming to church and we were at the old TFF where I, I didn't have any strength. Where I would pray and worship, but sometimes there were no words coming out of my mouth. It was just tears. And, and I, I know that there was no way of, like, going anywhere else but God, right? And I think in your situation, you know, I don't know what you're going through, but you can sit here today and say, God, I, I don't have anywhere else to go but here, to, got, to grab strength from you, to, to know that, God, I don't understand the situation, but I'm grabbing a hold of you. I'm, having a, 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 I'm grabbing a hold of your promise. And like Manny was saying, like, till the very end, we, you know, my mom passed away, unfortunately, but... There's always a but in the story. Like, God was still good. Like, he still remained faithful. And let me tell you that although the doctors told my mom to commit abortion, like, my, my mom was able to have my sister, and my sister is now five years old, and by the grace of God, she's healthy. So there, there, you know, God was faithful, and he continues to be faithful. You know, and, and in, our, in our culture or in, in, in church, right, we want to skip over that sometimes. We, we want to skip over the hard times. We want to skip over the, the, you know, grabbing a hold of God and saying, God, I'm going to press in, right? I'm going to press in with you. I'm going to hold on to your word. I'm going to come to church even though I can't. I'm going to come to church even though, you know, my bank account says nothing. I'm going to come to church even if and even what, right? Because th these are the times that God has chosen us to be here. These are the times that we need to rise up. These are the, I mean, it's good to come to church and, and pray and worship, but what about when you're at work? What about when your coworkers say, I'm atheist? What about when your coworkers say, I don't want to know about God, right? Th th those are hard. I mean, we experience that. I experience that every day. Sometimes my coworkers are like having a conversation and I step in and it's like little ants, like everyone's like, and I'm like, no, 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 like come back. Like you need <laughs> Jesus, man. Like, <laughs> you know? And so, but we can't skip through that, right? Because then, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, you know, okay, <laughs> we can't going, skip through going. that. Like during those times, your faith, right? It it will it will cause you to endure, right? And you can look back and say, man, this process was difficult. It was difficult, but I endured. And, and that's the only way to grow in patience. That's the only way to grow in patience. One more thing to add uh, to your testimony. After your mom passes away, I really begin to see how God began to, to comfort you in that loss. Obviously, also through my life. But after she, her mom passes away, she didn't become bitter and angry towards God and, and, and begin to, well, why would you allow this to happen, God? Because I've done that sometimes. Right? I've done that. But even though she was hurting and she was in pain, she was experiencing God's, God's love over her life, which it was something so beautiful. So thank you for sharing love. Um, the next thing is, and I think, it, I think you said it, but it's, it's the culture that we have nowadays that if you're going through suffering, you're not doing it right. Right? That's our culture. If, if, there's, if you're going through a struggle, you're not doing it right. A struggle-free life is a life to live in our culture, right? But that's not real life. That's not real life. The life of a Christian, this is crazy because Jesus calls us to suffer. Right? When, 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 when Jesus calls uh, the apostle Paul at that moment, Saul... He tells Ananias, hey, go pray for this guy because I'm going to show him the things that he will suffer in my name. What a great way to evangelize the Apostle Paul, right? <laughs> I tell him the things that I'm going to suffer, that he's going to suffer for my name, right? But it's the muscle that has to be exercised, right? It, it's, it's who you run to when you go through a difficult situation because we will go through a difficult situation. 
Not because God wills it, not because God wants to mess with you, not because God is, has nothing better to do, but because we live in the world of sin. It's that simple. Amen? You know, and the world is looking to see what your faith is made out of, right? Like, people are going to see God and through the situation that you're going through, the way you endure. So it's, it's important that today we say, I want to grow in patience, right? I know a lot of us, you know, in the beginning heard about long suffering, but you can say, man, like, if I'm going through this, right? If I'm going through this situation, it's going to bring glory to God, right? And so for the second point... It's called, uh, if you guys are taking notes, patience for purpose. Patience for purpose. And let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we were actually singing about it right now earlier in worship. But it says, and we know that all things work for your good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Is that what it says? You guys paying attention? What does it say? So I read it wrong. It says, and we know that all things work for your good. Is that what it says? No, right? It says that all things work for good. But sometimes when we're going through a difficult time or we're going through a time of waiting, we think that this verse applies for our good or for our benefit. And we're so deceived. How we become so self-centered to think that everything works for my good. No, everything works for good, for his good, for righteousness, right? Everything works for good. All things work for good to those who are, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Let me tell you something that everything you go through, everything you go through God has a purpose for it. Every, everything you go through has a purpose. If you get sick, God has a purpose. If you get fired, God has a purpose. Even if you messed up, even if it's because you kept being laid, God's going to teach you something. Right? God has a purpose. As long as you love him and you're called according to his purpose, he's going to make all things. It's the beauty that all things will work for good. And they have a purpose. Everything you go through in life has a purpose. Believe that. You know, and when you go through, you know, suffering, sometimes we become so, so like, short-sighted of, of what God is doing, right? Like, you're so focused on the circumstance that you can't see it. I remember that when, you know, my mom was sick, Pastor Pablo sat me down, um, and he told me, like, what you're going through is just temporary. But in that moment... To me, it felt like forever. Like to me, it felt like I was going, I was going to go through this for a very long time. But the truth is that in, in that moment, it, it will pass. That moment will pass, right? And you have to understand that you need to have vision in that moment, right? Like maybe you can't see it, but you do pray and you say, God, I don't understand, but I'm going to see something, right? You're going to use my life. I'm going to... It's going to probably bring faith to your family members. It's going to probably bring faith to people around you. And I think the reason why faith was mentioned in the beginning when it says your faith, the testing of your faith, because it takes faith to believe that God has something better after this. It takes faith to believe that he is for you. It takes faith to believe that it will work out for good. It takes faith to believe that Yes, maybe, yes, I came to encounter and God forgave me, but my family members still don't want to come to Jesus. It takes faith to believe. And there is a, a process of waiting. There's a process of enduring. There's a process of they're going to make fun of you and they're going to talk all the trash and they're going to make you feel a certain way, but you're going to endure. You're going to be patient, right? It's a process that you cannot skip. I wish everything would be so easy, right? We just wish just everything would be perfect, but man, we grow through the process. And Manny, can you um, give us 
an example <laughs> when, you know, purpose, you know, you were going through something and you saw past that situation? Uh, well, it's there, but um, I remember when, we, when you and I got married. Uh-oh. <laughs> when Emily and I got married, man, we had a rough time where all of a sudden life wasn't just about me <laughs> all of a sudden we had to come together and agree in certain things and, and my selfishness was tested and and my self-centeredness was tested and 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 it was a, a rough time where we couldn't get along at some time right and we were serving god and and this feels like a venting session, but go keep going. <laughs> but we, 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 we were going through a difficult time in our marriage where she was probably wondering, where's that man of God that I wanted to marry? And, and, and I was like, and, where is that woman of God that I wanted to marry, right? And not only that, but like there was a lot of pride, you know? And, and we're being honest with you guys because it took a lot of patience to be able to understand one another. It took a lot of sitting down with pastors it took a lot of sitting down with our leaders and to be able to say, like, you know, like, we're, we're being prideful in this moment, right? But, you know, what, what made you believe or what, what made you kind of like just keep pressing and pushing and saying, like, come on, we're, we have to get this together, you know? I think the, the, the thing that always resonated was God wants to use us. That's the, that was my motivation to grow. That was my motivation to get over myself and, and, and ask for help. Because we knew that at the end of the day, the reason we got married wasn't for us. It was because we wanted God to use us. There was purpose in our marriage. And that purpose wasn't being fulfilled because we were being fleshly, right? But the, the thing that, that kept me wanting to grow and, and pursue how to get better, how we can grow uh, and be Christ-like, because I knew that God wanted to use us. Do you know that God wants to use you? Do you know that God has a purpose in that midst of that circumstance? When you're getting some attitude, when you're being disrespected, when they don't want to hear what you got to say, do you know that there's purpose in there, right? That was my main motivation that, man, God wants to use a marriage. And he's been using our marriage. Amen. Amen? So just to, you know, remind you guys, the first point was, you guys remember? Patient that leads to endurance. Yes. And the second one? What was it? Patience for purpose. And now we're going to hit the third point, which is it's probably the, this is actually the most important point of this of this whole message honestly you know when we're talking about the fruit of this spirit it's not and you want to grow in patience and, and love joy peace it's not in your effort in being more patient it's not in your effort in being more loving or or trying to to be more joyful out of your own effort right let me read you this verse in John 15, verse 4. Let me know when you guys have it. Okay, so it says, verse 4, Remain in me, and I in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, but, of itself, but must remain in the vine, so neither can you, Unless you remain in me. Let me read it again. Remain in me and I in you. Just as you and I cannot bear patience on itself. Are you guys getting it? Yeah. Remain in me. Just as the branch cannot bear patience. It cannot bear fruit of itself. But must remain in the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. You don't have a patience problem. You have an abiding problem. It's not your ability to be more patient. It's in your ability to abide in him. Because he produces that. 
as you abide in him, as you surrender, as you, as you sacrifice, as you spend time with him, as you stay close to him, he produces patience. His patience, his love, his peace. Amen? Amen. John Kirsten says, Yet I do see Christians straining and striving, grunting and groaning, because they fail to understand that the secret of fruit bearing is to try to figure out how to make fruit. The secret of fruit bearing is in abiding. That's the secret. You want to grow in manifesting the fruit of the, of the Spirit? Abide. Get into the secret place. And I think if you find yourself today saying, you know, over the past weeks we've learned about love, joy, peace, patience, right? And if today you say, man, like I've been, I've been struggling in, the, in this area, right, to, to actually show someone, to actually show it, you know, to, to others around you. Like Manny was saying, it's important to spend time with God. It's important that today you understand that you can't do this in your own strength, right? Sometimes you can't love, you know, your coworkers. You can't love the person that can't forgive you, right? You can't be joyous, right, through the situation that you're going through. But, you know, when you spend time with God, when you abide in Him, when you connect with the right source, you're going to be able to manifest this. And it's not just through your own strength because... The opposite of, in, of patience is not just impatience, right? You see, you know, it's, it's not like someone who blows up quickly. But the opposite of patience is also frustration. It's also that you quit. It's also that at some point, right, you're praying for something for so long. Maybe you're praying for your cell group. Maybe you're praying for something. And you're like, man, I don't see it come through. And then there's that lack of, there's that frustration, right, that you say, man, like, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and I'm not seeing anything. So then all of a sudden, these things start to line up. Lack of faith, right? You're, you're now, like, disinterested. You know, now, now it's really hard for you to, like, you know, pray. But I think going back to that, saying, I, I want to remain and abide in Christ, right? Like I was sharing earlier, you have to hold on to God sometimes. And I think today we're going to have the opportunity to say, it's not about, you know, you evaluating yourself and saying, man, I, I've been like a wreck. I've been like not showing all these things, but to say like, wait, God gives me the opportunity today to tap into his presence, that today he gives you a chance to say, you know what? I want you, I, I pray that today you want to walk out the fruit of the spirit, right? That you, that people around you would be able to tell, right? The God that lives in you, right? The God that, you know, sometimes people can't see that because you're full of all these other things, which is like frustration and stress and impatience when saying no, like I, I want to walk in that. Why don't we stand up? We're going to have a time of uh, ministering. If I can have some music in the background, why don't you guys uh, just close your eyes where you are. Just close your eyes. Forget about the person that's next to you. And I want you to examine your life right now. If there's this fear when it comes to you facing trials, or maybe fear has robbed you from serving God because you know that if you serve the Lord, you will go through trials. You will go through testing. And I believe the Lord is telling you tonight, take heart. Take heart. Trust me. And I just, I just see Jesus as he's hanging on the cross. Bleeding. Crucified. With the nails on his hands, on his feet. And I wonder if... If all that suffering and all that pain... If he would have said, no, this is too much. And I want you to understand that 
all of that pain that he went through and all of the suffering and all the mocking had the biggest purpose, which was our salvation. And the first thing is, if you're here tonight and you say, Lord, I want to experience that fruit. I'm tired of trying to be good, of trying to be this person in my own strength. I'm tired of the old me. And you want to surrender your life to the Lord and receive his spirit so that you can walk in the fruit of the spirit. Pray this prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you right now and I surrender my life. I recognize that the blood that you shed on the cross and the life that you gave for me paid for my sins. I repent and I let go of the past. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Amen. You know, and if you're going through a difficult time right now, there's hope for you. There's hope that God is in the midst of the situation that you're going through. That if you made this prayer for the first time, or maybe you've been walking with God for a long time, just know that the Holy Spirit lives in you, right? It's, sometimes it's the voice of God that reminds us in those moments that He is with us, that you're not walking alone, that in this situation, right, that you, you're pressing in and you're saying, God, this is hard, that God listens to your prayers, that His presence is here, Man. right? As long as you abide in Him and as yes, long as God. you're pressing in right now and seeking the presence of God, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's tears coming down, or maybe it's you don't have enough words to express to him, right? But that God listens to your prayer. That God listens to those, those times where you've been in your bed crying and praying. Maybe you've just been searching after the presence of God, right? Maybe, maybe nothing's happening in your life right now. Maybe everything's good for you, right? But when was the last time you, you searched after God? When was the last time you said, God, I want to know more of you? I want to I want to seek your presence. I want you to come into my life. I, I want I want to search, right? I want to search you. And I think this is an opportunity today to to do that because God is here. His Amen. presence is here, yes, right? God. If you want to grow in patience, if you want to allow the Holy Spirit to to flow through your life so he can use you if you make this prayer, it could be one of the most powerful prayers you make. And it's a prayer of death. It's a prayer where you die to your old you. When you die to your old coping mechanisms. When you die to the way you're used to doing things. When you die to the way the world tells you to live. You see, you have, you have, you have patience. You have the Holy Spirit. But there's so much flesh. There's so much flesh that is deceiving you. There's so much flesh that needs to be crucified. That needs to be nailed on the cross. Just like the Apostle Paul said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This is the moment. This is the moment where you decide to die daily. To crucify your flesh. So if you want to make this prayer, repeat after me. Lord, I surrender right now. 
I surrender. to the thoughts of frustration, of doing things my own way. I surrender the old man and I declare that I am jointly crucified with you. And the man of sin is crucified and I no longer live but you Lord live in me live through me and love and patience and joy and peace flows through my life because I no longer will pay attention to the flesh but to your spirit. I submit right now to your spirit, to joy, to peace, to patience. Help me, Lord. Test my faith. Test my faith so I can show myself faithful to you. So I can show the world who you are, that you remain good, faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You surrender the old man. You surrender There is this breaking away right now. There is this breaking away. And I believe the Lord is telling you right now. A separation. A new understanding. To separate yourself from the old man. To no longer identify yourself with how you were raised with how your parents raised you, with how the world raised you, but now you will identify yourself with Christ in you. And when you go through a difficult time, as you abide in Him, patience will flow. Peace will flow. Love will flow. Father, we just thank you right now because you remain good. Because you've been so patient with us, God. Because you are patient. Because you remain patient, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In spite of our mistakes, in spite of our rebellion, in spite of us, God, you remain faithful, Lord. You remain patient, God. Thank you. Thank you that you're a good father, Lord. Thank you that you remain present with us, God. And you never leave us, Lord. Thank you that you're always there, enduring. Thank you, Lord, because you know the purpose that you've called us to live, God. Thank you because you know what you deposited within us, God. Thank you that you know what we're supposed to look like, God. Thank you that you know, Lord, far beyond what we're going through, God. You know, you know, and you make all things work for good, Lord. Help us. Give us vision, Lord. And help us see way beyond our circumstance, Father. We thank you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.